7 Things You Must Do While Healing After Narcissistic Abuse Part 1 1. Unfollow Unfriend Block Delete Social media is the enemy of the healing process. And it's not just your ex you need to stop checking it on, but also anyone, flying monkeys, enablers, fence sitters, who could potentially ruin your day by reminding you of your pain. Tempting as it may be to see what, or who, your ex is doing, this is nothing short of masochistic and will lead the car you're driving to screech right off a cliff into the ravine below. The reason is because narcissists will do one of two things on social media, either they'll post their new and fabulous life to show how happy they are without you, they're really not, they're just trying to make their internal shame for being such a douchebag go away, or they'll bombard you with pleas of reuniting while promising they'll change, FYI, narcissists don't change, they only get worse. There is a simple way to avoid this nightmare, unfriend, unfollow, block, delete. 2. Empower yourself through your own education. One of the reasons so many victims of narcissistic abuse do not realize they are victims until much later or even after the relationship ends is due to a lack of knowledge of what constitutes abuse and what exactly a narcissist is. I had never heard of narcissistic personality disorder or narcissistic abuse and believed that a narcissist was just someone who looked in the mirror a lot and took too many selfies. This in addition to the fact that I didn't have bruises or broken bones to show for my pain left me feeling isolated and alone, unable as I was to figure out what was going on. 3. We out the people who are not 100% on your side. Ooh, this is a tough one, if only because it's always the people we least expect who end up deserting us in our hour of need. But here's the thing, keeping people who are in any way, shape, or form holding you back from your movement forward is a surefire way to set you back three steps for every two that you take. When you're healing, you are tender, you are emotional, you are sensitive and vulnerable and easy prey for those who don't have your best interests at heart. So anyone who is enabling your abuser, anyone who is victim blaming you, why can't you just move on already? Was it really that bad? Anyone who doesn't fully believe you, and anyone who sits on the fence with the pathetic excuse of I don't want to get in the middle of this, doesn't deserve to be on this journey with you because of their intentions, which are wholly self-serving. Not sure how to distinguish who exactly these people are. Warning, it could be your closest friend, or who you thought was a friend, or a family member. Ask yourself this question, when you're with them, do you leave their presence feeling better about yourself? Or worse, do you feel safe with them? Or do you feel like you have to defend yourself? That's all you need to know. Someone who is completely on your side will have your best interests at heart, not their own. Thus you will feel good when you're around them. Those are the people worth keeping. Those are the ones who you want in the backseat of that car you're driving and who will cheer you on the entire way. 4. Don't block out the past. This attempt will be four flat tires on your road to recovery. Though in all likelihood it will be the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life, it's imperative that you spend time reflecting on the past and examine how you got to where you are now. This does not mean taking any blame for what happened to you by a narcissistic abuser because no one deserves to be abused. No one asks for it. It does mean, however, that you need to figure out how you ended up with someone who didn't treat you as you deserve to be treated in life and why you put up with it. I found this to be the toughest part of healing because I had to look back at my childhood and my abusive father who normalized abuse in our family, therefore setting me up as soon as I left his house at the age of 18 for a future with abusive men. I learned that this was why I had no self-worth, thus I had no boundaries, thus I had no idea that I was worthy of anything better than a man who treated me like my father did, as an object of his control, as someone who didn't matter and therefore should count herself lucky that any man would want her. If I hadn't traveled back into my past to figure this all out, I risked entering into a similar relationship in the future. Because the past is funny like that, and also unrelenting. I always hear the past in the voice of Alex, the jilted lover of Michael Douglas in the movie Fatal Attraction, I'm not going to be ignored, Dan. Then when she is actually ignored, she goes all knife-wielding crazy and tries to kill him and nobody wants that.